Hey everyone, hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be reading Judges 8, Ecclesiastes 10, and Habakkuk 1. But let's pray before we get into the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this day that we might spend with you and get to know you a little bit more. Please guide us with your Holy Spirit and open up our hearts and our minds to anything that you would have us to know or anything that you might be trying to change in our lives today. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you poured out on us that we don't deserve. And please forgive us of our sins and lead us away from temptation, that we might be more like you and glorify you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. Judges 8 Now the Ephraimites asked Gideon, Why have you treated us like this? Why didn't you call us when you went to fight Midian? And they challenged him vigorously. But he answered them, What have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't the gleanings of Ephraim's grapes better than the full grape harvest of Abizar? God gave Oreb and Zeb, the Midianite leaders, into your hands. What was I able to do compared to you? At this, the resentment against him subsided. Gideon and his three hundred men, exhausted yet keeping up the pursuit, came to the Jordan and crossed it. He said to the men of Succoth, Give my troops some bread. They are worn out, and I am still pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Succoth said, Do you already have the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna in your possession? Why should we give bread to your troops? Then Gideon replied, Just for that, when the Lord has given Zeba and Zalmunna into my hand, I will tear your flesh with desert thorns and briars. From there he went up to Peniel, and made the same request of them, but they answered as the men of Succoth had. So he said to the men of Peniel, When I return in triumph, I will tear down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkor with a force of about 15,000 men, all that were left of the armies of the eastern peoples. A 120,000 swordsmen had fallen. Gideon went up by the route of the nomads east of Noba and Jogbeha, and attacked the unsuspecting army. Zeba and Zalmunna, the two kings of Midian, fled, but he pursued them and captured them, routing their entire army. Gideon, son of Joash, then returned from the battle by the pass of Herez. He caught a young man of Succoth and questioned him, and the young man wrote down for him the names of the seventy-seven officials of Succoth, the elders of the town. Then Gideon came and said to the men of Succoth, here are Zeba and Zalmunna, about whom you taunted me by saying, Do you already have the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna in your possession? Why should we give bread to your exhausted men? He took the elders of the town and taught the men of Succoth a lesson by punishing them with desert thorns and briars. He also pulled down the tower of Peniel and killed the men of the town. Then he asked Zeba and Zalmunna, What kind of men did you kill at Tabor? Men like you, they answered, each one with the bearing of a prince. Gideon replied, Those were my brothers, the sons of my own mother. As surely as the Lord lives, if you had spared their lives, I would not kill you. Turning to Jether, his oldest son, he said, Kill them. But Jether did not draw his sword, because he was only a boy and was afraid. Zeba and Zalmunna said, Come, do it yourself. As is the man, so is his strength. So Gideon stepped forward and killed them and took the ornaments off their camels' necks. The Israelites said to Gideon, Rule over us, you, your son, and your grandson, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And he said, I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring, from your share of the plunder, it was the custom of the Ishmaelites to wear gold earrings. They answered, We'll be glad to give them. So they spread out a garment, and each of them threw a ring from his plunder onto it. The weight of the gold rings he asked for came to seventeen hundred shekels, not counting the ornaments, the pendants, and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, or the chains that were on their camels' necks. Gideon made the gold into an ephod, which he placed in Ophrah, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves by worshipping it there, 
and it became a snare to Gideon and his family. Thus Midian was subdued before the Israelites and did not raise its head again. During Gideon's lifetime, the land had peace forty years. Jeroboam, son of Joash, went back home to live. He had seventy sons of his own, for he had many wives. His concubine, who lived in Shechem, also bore him a son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon, son of Joash, died at a good old age, and was buried in the tomb of his father, Joash, in Ophrah of the Bezrites. No sooner had Gideon died than the Israelites again prostituted themselves to the Baals. They set up Baal Bereth as their god, and did not remember the Lord their god, who had rescued them from the hands of all their enemies on every side. They also failed to show any loyalty to the family of Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, in spite of all the good things he had done for them. Ecclesiastes 10 As dead flies give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. Even as fools walk along the road, they lack sense and show everyone how stupid they are. If a ruler's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Calmness can lay great offenses to rest. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, the sort of error that arises from a ruler. Fools are put in many high positions, while the rich occupy the low ones. I have seen slaves on horseback, while princes go on foot like slaves. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it. Whoever breaks through a wall may be bitten by a snake. Whoever quarries stones may be injured by them. Whoever splits logs may be endangered by them. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. If a snake bites before it is charmed, the charmer receives no fee. Words from the mouth of the wise are gracious, but fools are consumed by their own lips. At the beginning their words are folly, at the end they are wicked madness, and fools multiply words. No one knows what is coming. Who can tell someone else what will happen after them? The toil of fools wearies them. They do not know the way to town. Woe to the land whose king was a servant, and whose princes feast in the morning. Blessed is the land whose king is of noble birth, and whose princes eat at a proper time, for strength and not for drunkenness. Through laziness the rafters sag. Because of idle hands the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, wine makes life merry, and money is the answer for everything. Do not revile the king even in your thoughts, or curse the rich in your bedroom. Because a bird in the sky may carry your words, and a bird on the wing may report what you say. Habakkuk 1 The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received how long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife, and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. Look at the nations and watch. And be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people, who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves, and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong, their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping to devour. They all come intent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind, and gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. By building earthen ramps, they capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on, guilty people whose own strength is their god. Lord, are you not from everlasting? 
My God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment. You, my rock, have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? You have made people like the fish in the sea, like the sea creatures that have no ruler. The wicked foe pulls all of them up with hooks. He catches them in his net. He gathers them up in his dragnet. And so he rejoices and is glad. Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his dragnet. For by his net he lives in luxury and enjoys the choicest food. Is he to keep on emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? Thanks for joining and listening today. If you have any questions, leave them down here in the comments section and I'll be making some videos where I go through some of those questions, show you some of the questions that I had, and maybe we can find some answers or even dive into it together. Thanks guys, hit the like and subscribe and come back for more. Alright guys, take it easy. Bye, God bless.